guys, welcome back to my channel and another brand favorites here today. I've already done three of these in this series. I've done my three biggest like chunks of my collection. So China Glaze, I've done Zoya and Halo Taco was the last one. So now we're going to move into like the smaller yet still way too big portions of my collections, brands in my collection. And I figured why not Essie? Essie was a brand that I initially bought like at the beginning of my collection and I haven't really bought any recently. The last time I bought an Essie was in February of 2022, so this year. But then before that, I bought an Essie in June of 2021. So like that was a long stretch to not buy from a singular brand. Before I bought that one in June of 2021, everything else I purchased was in 2020 and before. So I guess what I'm trying to say is I don't buy Essie very frequently anymore. I know some people absolutely love Essie's. Like, I'm pretty sure I've heard Nail Lacquer Therapy say she specifically collects Essie's. Like, she has an insane Essie collection. But, like, and, and they're definitely a very popular drugstore brand as well. Or are they considered? Yeah, I think they're considered drugstore, right? They're mainstream, at least. They're a very popular mainstream brand. For some reason, though, even at the beginning, I just... I didn't connect, you know, I didn't connect on a molecular level with Essie and I don't know what it is. Something about, I love kitschy stuff. I, I really do it from like, I like to look at it, but I don't like to totally have it, I guess. I don't know. It's like the bottles feel just, they, they look a little kitschy to me in a way that I just didn't enjoy. They remind me of like mason jars in a way. I don't know what it is. Not only that, but the quality of the polish was very hit or miss with me and my body chemistry. You know, everybody's body, everybody's body chemistry kind of works differently with different polishes. And so some people find that certain polishes peel or chip really quickly, whereas other people don't. And part of that is just the way you prep your nails and stuff like that. But some of it is just, you know, some people have oilier skin and nails than others. And I think that leads to you know, certain chipping on some people and not on others. And for me, Essie just, it chipped all the time. I, d I don't know why. And the other thing is when I was initially getting into Essie, the color range was like not there. I mean, now they introduce a lot of like greens and, and blues and yellows and like, you know, brighter colors into their range. But when I first got into nail polish, I remember going to the nail polish aisle at Meyer and looking at the Essie rack, and it was a, a rainbow of reds and pinks, and that was about it. Then there was like after school boy blazer or something like that. Is that what it's called? After school boy blazer? School boy after blazer? I, I don't remember what order the words go in, but there's the word blazer and there's the word boy and school. It's all in there. They had that one and like, yeah, that's it. Like that was their pop of color. But Essie has definitely changed over the years. They have brought like two or three, a couple different new lines. Then they have like Gel Couture, they have Expressi, they have new brushes, like these big wide paddle brushes in their new polishes. And I've seen a lot more color coming out of Essie's lines. So definitely a turn in the right direction in my opinion, but it still just isn't enough to draw me back in. So we're gonna pull from, you know, I think I have, I have 41 Essies in total. So I'm gonna show you my top, 10. Oh, and just like one more thing on the bottles. Let me show you. This drives me insane. So some of the bottles have this white, like it's like a flat logo on one side and then the other sides have that that raised or like embossed SE logo. And then some are just the embossed SE logo. And I did some research once and I remember saying like, the, the article said like one of them was for salon specifically and one of them was for mass consumption. I think that I get like the, which one's for the salon? I wrote this down, hang on. Okay, yeah, so like the, em, the embossing only one was apparently for salons, whereas the one with the logo is for like consumer consumption. Um, I don't get that, I don't, I don't get it at all. Like I said earlier, like they look kitschy and like, I feel like that embossing, that's what makes me think it looks kind of like a mason jar. And it's like, I like kitschy stuff. I think it's cute, but for some reason, I just, I don't know. It just, it's not, it's not my vibe. That's all. I just feel like it makes them look a little bit cheap and Essie is like anything but cheap. All that said, I did find some of these polishes that 
I really love. They're staples in my collections. I have repurchased and you will see I have some that have a fill line that is like quite low for, you know, my collection. So let's get into my top 10 in no particular order. So number one is Aim to Misbehave. This is the only main line yellow Essie that I own. I do have an Essie Gel Couture that is yellow, but it's like baby room yellow. You know what I mean? That super light pastel -y yellow. This is one like I had to have because it just felt like part of nail polish history, as cheesy as that sounds, because it's Essie's 1000th polish and they did like the most un -Essy thing at that time and they made it a yellow. And I just thought that was so funny. Like, I don't know if they were like kind of poking fun at themselves or just like kind of being ironic because like I said earlier, they were a rainbow of reds and pinks, you know? And then it was just like, boom, this yellow came out. And I'm sure that they were releasing a lot more fun colors around that time, but it just seemed like after that, it was like it cascaded in and now we have a lot more like different like greens and yellows and blues and stuff like that. It was almost like a, like an announcement of like, here's what's coming guys, get ready, boom, aim to misbehave. And the cap was fun. It has this like gold foiling and I think it's like, confetti chunks and it's supposed to like look like confetti i don't think it looks like confetti i don't know what it looks like it looks kind of messy but i had to have this i i avoided actually picking it up at first because i was like i don't really buy se anymore i don't need this and then one day i was walking by it at the store and i just like grabbed it without even looking and just put it in my cart because i was like i gotta get this before i regret it next on the list is of course se's chin chili and girl you've heard me talk about this non-stop a million times. I'm sure some of the polishes I talk about, you guys are like, okay, we've heard this, but I feel like that's just a testament to show you like, I do use these, I do like these, I do think about these. Even in a collection as big as mine, you know, the fact that I'm harping on the same polishes over and over should tell you these are standouts. Like I said before in previous videos, this is one of the only polishes in my life that I have ever used up. And it is the only polish that I have used up and then repurchased, okay? So like, that should tell you, I love this polish. I, I used it all up. It was one that I took overseas with me when I moved abroad because I could only bring so many, many and this made the cut. And because it was one of the like, one of the 30 that I had with me, it got used up, you know, in that time frame. And then I put off rebuying it for a long time because I was like, you have so many polishes, it's fine, you don't need it again. And then it just, it, the, the need, the urge for Essie's Chinchilli overtook me. And so I did end up buying this second bottle. And again, I just love it. It's such a beautiful color. Then we have Naughty Nautical. Now this is one of the first like brighter colors aside from Aim to Misbehave that I purchased from Essie. This is a fun little teal. I love teal nail polish and it has a bit of a shimmer running through it, which you can see on the nail, but it is quite subtle. Um, it does stain. If you don't like stained nails, you probably won't like this. Um, I don't care. I don't have them painted right now, but I usually have them painted. And if anybody's looking at my stained nails and they think it's gross, well, like, stop looking at me then. I don't know what to tell you. Now, at the time when I purchased this, this polish felt very unique to me from Essie, you know, as the whole brand, like I said, pinks and reds, pinks and reds. Now, though, they kind of release... I don't want to say it, but they kind of release the same collection over and over with like just a slight difference in tone. So this polish is definitely not really unique in their color story as a brand anymore, but at the time it felt unique to me and I really like it and I love a good teal polish. So, okay, next is one I have talked about on this channel as well. It's an oldie, but a goodie in my opinion. This is Essie's Aruba Blue. Now let me show you my bottle because first of all, She's about halfway gone. I don't know if you can see that fill line there. But the other thing too is this is one of the first bottles of polish that I ever bought. This was well before I knew how to open a bottle uh, that was stuck. So those are all just teeth marks on the cap. <laughs> disgusting, Hiller. You're disgusting. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know what it was. I bought this and... Um, one of their metallic silvers at the same time because I was like, ooh, I'm gonna do like alternating blue and silver. And then I did that and I was like, this looks like a homecoming dress. I just look at this and I just think school dance, but 
somehow I used up half the bottle. I really liked this color quite a lot and I still think about it. I haven't worn it in a while, so I should probably wear it again, but it's a really pretty like sapphire blue jewel tone. It applies really easily and it dries really quick because it is that more metallic-y formula. And you know, I love it when they dry down fast because I am the queen of messing up my nails two seconds after I finish painting them. Okay, then we have Essie's Butler Please. This is another one where I have a pretty decent chunk taken out of the polish. I love these types of blues that are kind of like that blue screen of death or like painter's tape blues. I Apparently I just love blue. I, I feel like I don't like blue, but I buy a lot of blue things, so I must like blue. I don't know what it is. But yeah, I, I really like this color. I. I just ordered a Telfar bag not too uh, long ago. Um, probably won't get here till like October, but I bought it in a color called Painter's Tape. And it reminded me a little bit of this blue or just blues in this vein. And I really like this, especially with like a darker color. So like, I feel like against black, it looks pretty cool. Um, and so I really like this and it just, this particular one, it, it has kind of, you can't really tell on camera, I think, but in person, there's like a drop of purple in it and it almost makes it look a little bit glowy. And so I do really like this. And I don't know if I said, but it is called Butler Please. Next is Essie's Mint Candy Apple. And this is another one that has that fill line there, that visible fill line. I feel like a lot of my Essies have a visible fill line, I guess because I was using these the most early on. And so... That's kind of what you get when you have less nail polishes to use. You use more of the ones you have. But this is a polish that every single like Essie iconic shades, Essie must haves list or video or anything like that. This was on there. Mint candy apple. Everyone was like, love the color, hate the formula. And you know what? They're not wrong. Love this color. Formula is like, please, why? Why is it so bad? Like I said at the beginning of this video, they have since added those wider brushes into these. Uh, and so that should kind of take care of the problem. I bought it for my sister for her birthday last year, and she said she had no issue with it. But with this skinny brush, it's just like it pulls up on itself. It gets a little bit streaky if you overwork it, you know. So you have to be careful if you have one of the older bottles. But the new bottles of this seem to work just fine. So I would not hesitate to buy this if you are interested. It's just kind of in that that like line of like sea foam, robin's egg, Tiffany blues that I have so many of, but you know, it never hurts to have one more on hand. Okay, next is Penny Talk. Now, I know I said I don't like love metallics anymore in one of my recent Topic Tuesday videos. However, this one has one of those like long arduous stories that, you know, has nothing to do with nail polish, but is the reason why I like it. So, you know, strap in, buckle up. I bought this polish um, in the early days of my collecting because it reminded me of my dad, which seems a little bit weird, right? It's like, what, copper? Like, why? So my dad is a numismatist, which is just a fancy way of saying he collects coins, okay? And when I was a kid, he used to take me to this huge coin convention, like this collecting, currency collecting convention, and we would go every year, I think it was like, near Thanksgiving, but I could be wrong. And that is just like, still to this day, one of my fondest memories of him because it was just something that I got to look forward to, just me and my dad every year. But he had like these books of pennies that, you know, you collect every year from different mints. And uh, it's pretty common if, if you've ever seen any coin collector, like everybody has these. But I don't know how niche that is actually, <laughs> because I grew up around someone who just collects coins like crazy, but does anybody else do that? Did anybody else's dad have like the coin collecting hobby? Anyways, so what he would do is he would go to the bank and he would get $20 worth of rolled pennies. And then we would dump all the rolls out and we would search through them together, like me and him and sometimes my brother and sister. And we would look through all these pennies and we would find the ones that maybe he was missing or ones that might actually be worth like more than a penny, you know, if you sold them to a collector. And then we would count them all out back into their rolls, which is probably part of the way I learned how to count as a kid. And then, you know, that was it. Like that was our time together. We did like this activity together and it was weirdly fun. And so like when I saw this super perfect copper penny color, like this rosy gold, 
I don't know, it just reminded me of my dad and then I had to have it and I, I do really like this color. And rose gold was really trending at that time. So, oops, I dropped it. That that helped me, that pushed me over the edge. But mostly I just see this and I think of my dad. And every time I see a penny on the ground, I'm like, my dad would have picked that up. Okay, I think we have three left. So the next one is dressed to the 90s. And this one looks really dark on camera and it also looks kind of dark in the bottle. This is like a navy blue and it has a really interesting like green kind of teal shimmer running through it. And that was why I picked this one up because this was one of the more unique ones from Essie that I had ever seen at that time. You know, Essie just doesn't release a lot of stuff outside of creams, I feel like, or at least they didn't used to. I don't keep up with Essie so much anymore, but at that time I was used to mostly seeing like creams and like the, the trio of metallics they released. I feel like a lot of the shimmers that I have from Essie, they're really subtle. Like if you, if you saw my video the other day talking about um, polishes, like the finishes I do and don't like, I talked about specific polishes and I was complaining about one specific Essie um, Bikini Sotini and how it has a shimmer in the bottle that you cannot see on the nail. And that is kind of my experience with a lot of Essie shimmers is like, you can't see it on the nail or it is so subtle, it's like, you have to really be looking. This one, I don't feel that way. It was hard to photograph for me, but I do feel like in real life, I can definitely see it not only in the bottle, but on the nails as well. And so that's probably why this is more of a standout to me, maybe because the other shimmers in their collections have been so weak that this, like the one strong one is like, okay, it's thrown to spot number one automatically. Okay, and then we have the last of my severely used Essies. Check out the fill line on that bad boy. It's like halfway gone. So this is Forever Yummy. And it's like kind of funny because this used to be my 100% all-time favorite go-to red polish. And you guys know I don't really like to use red polishes that much because um, I can't function when it comes to putting them on and taking them off. But also, I you know, I don't love Essie so much. And so the fact that my favorite red came from Essie like two, like they're like two negatives almost in my head make a positive in that way. It has since been knocked out of its top slot by Moxie's Truth, but I still do like this polish. I mean, it, it's just not my top favorite anymore. The reason I really fell for this one, and like, I hate saying this because I, I don't like this word as a descriptor. I don't know why. It just makes me feel like, Bleh. but it's just like, it looks juicy. On the nails, like juicy, yeah, it does, but I don't like to say it. Um, gross. But it's just bright and glossy and, you know, shiny and fun. And it just reminds me of like a candy dipped apple or like something like that. And so that's why I really fell for this particular shade of red. And I don't know, I think that that's why, like this is just my favorite type of red to wear on the nails. It's just so classic. Okay, and then my last favorite is Tangoed in Love. It's this really bright, fun purple. Now, I'm going to admit to you right off the bat, this one, you can see all of the texture on your nails. Like, immediately, it's completely textured. You can see it in my picture here. So much texture. So if you have textured nails and you want to wear this matte as it dries down, you are going to want to definitely use a ridge filling base coat but otherwise, if you throw on a glossy top coat, typically, at least in my experience, you can't really see the texture anymore. This is probably my favorite tone of purple. I just really love this kind of like bright, poppy kind of like, would you call it neon? I don't think it's quite neon, but like in that kind of realm, I love those types of purples. And so this one really called to me. And I don't know, it's just like one of those that when I think about purples, this is definitely one of my favorites. Um, but like I said, the formula has a little bit to be desired. However, just, just wear the ridge filling base coat. It's not that bad. I have one ridge filling base coat, but like, I never wear it because I don't care if you can see the texture in my nails because I don't know. I feel like ridge fillers don't do much for me in the way of texture, but maybe I just don't have the right one. Okay. So those are my top 10 Essies in my collection. Like I said, I only have like 41. Is that what I said? Yeah, 41. And out of those, 38 are like these regular 
like mainline essays. And then the other three are those, what are the twisted ones called? Gel Couture, which I was really excited when they were, were going to release Gel Couture because I was like, oh, those bottles are so weird. But then when I realized they didn't fit like perfectly together like puzzle pieces, um, I was over it. I was like, that's stupid. I don't like these anymore. <laughs> Plus the colors and the initial launch just didn't really scream my name. They were a lot softer tones and I was just like, ah, I don't know. They're, they're, they were expensive, you know? The Expressi line, which they're kind of like in a similar bottle, but they're like thinner and like taller. Um, it piqued my interest for about like five seconds, but I never actually bought any. So let me know if they're any good. I did see somebody, it was probably Nail Lacquer Therapy, posted that... Expressi was coming out with these really interesting looking like they were like did it say 40 or HD or something they were these weird top coats that kind of had like a multi-chrome effect and I was just like oh that's kind of weird for Essie and while I didn't really want them for myself I was excited to see something different so yeah let me know if the Expressi line is worth it to you guys I just I don't love it when a main brand has a bunch of different sub lines looking at you Sally Hansen but it just, I don't know, I feel like, what's the point? And so I just don't try a bunch of them. And like, I don't know, it just doesn't, it doesn't fit in my drawers, right? It looks weird in my drawers. It looks weird on my, I'm looking at it on my spreadsheet and I'm like, the 9 million Sally Hansen brands, sub brands. I'm just like, come on, stop it. And Essie seems to be kind of doing something similar, although they only have their main and then their two subs, I think, but still, it's annoying. So yeah, that is my 10 Essies. I have enough, I think, for OPI, uh, Color Club, Sally Hansen, and Orly for sure for my mainstream brands to do like a top 10. And then everything else, there's some I probably could, but I don't have a big enough chunk of polishes to do what I would feel would be like a genuine top 10 because some brands I'm like, I have 10, so... That would be a weird top 10 to do. Like I own 10, top 10, like that doesn't make any sense. So I might do some like bite-sized ones and, and maybe just do like top five of this brand or, or like something like that. Let me know what you guys wanna see and I will try to get that out for you guys. And let me know what your absolute favorite essays are and why. But with all that said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one. Bye.